welcome to Wisdom Micro Moment. It's 10 a.m. Central Time. We're on here every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Uh, go to our website. Check out our website. Uh, in there. And some sign up for the free calendar report comes noon. Been published for over 20 years now. And uh, it tells it has emails from all our clients. It has emails from here, Tony and Mike and Randy. And uh, they answer people's questions. They give all kinds of other information. And it's totally free. So check out their seminars. Talk about those here in a little bit. Uh, let's see what else. I'll let Oh, we've had a really a crazy technique, the micro moment technique, really had a workout this week uh, with the market, I think, on Wednesday and uh, Thursday, uh, Tuesday, being up over 300 points, then down eight points yesterday. And we came out with great returns both days, and those are in the uh, to go out that it's already gone out this afternoon. Uh, you might check that out. Today, so far as of the end of today, Assume they don't go up 220% plus. And uh, we have more to go. So we very well be about 300% for the week. Uh, it's really a good test. In the micro moment, we trade, we don't trade prices, appreciation, appreciation stock. We, we just trade, we just trade movement, which makes it real easy. Each one of these fellows has explained here in a minute. And uh, if you have to call in, and the phone number is 214-377-108, 214-377-108. Call in, and uh, nobody will be able to see you, but... Uh, we'll Actually, Joe, Joe, we have the, the call in number, Joe, is, is not working at the moment, but if they can go to... Uh, Randy. They can go Randy? Hey, Randy. He's probably got his yes. earphones cut off. Oh, anyway, my phone's can cut you, off. Can you guys no, hear I can hear you, Randy. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Mike, can you hear me? Yeah. So I just want to say for anybody who's listening on uh, watching on YouTube, if you hey, uh, type a comment, if you type a comment, okay. hey, uh, yeah. we will see it and we'll be able to now. answer it. Tell us about your week. How's it going? What's going on? Joe's um, kind of cutting in and out. <laughs> Ray, Ray. Yeah, I think somebody needs to take over from Joe here because he's not hearing us and we're not hearing him very well. So why don't you take it, Randy? Okay, okay I'll talk a little bit about uh, what's been going on with Randy. With <laughs> Joe's picture's frozen uh, on there. He's 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 a snapshot in time there. Anyway. I'll talk about the platinum services for advanced charting and covered calls. Now, those are the little bit slower techniques than uh, Micah and Tony are going to talk about when they talk about those flash things where they're in and out in like seconds. But we have uh, two different platinum services that, that I manage, and then Keith does one, and Tony and Micah does uh, another one. The advanced charting platinum service is based on the proprietary advanced charting package that Compound Stock Earnings has developed and you can subscribe to. And we, we hold a training webinar every Monday morning that's live in the market and go through and teach how to interpret and read the advanced chart and we're looking for the beginning of cycles to enter a long position and then close it out as those cycles continue typically it takes about one to three days for those cycles to kind of play out with the profit sometimes it's within the same day a few hours later it's not within like two or three minutes like tony and and Mike do, but it's uh, it's great. This week during the webinar, I always go to look for new entry positions that we can find right there during the webinar. This week with the Monday, of course, being such a huge uh, declining day and the overall market is still in a rising trend or er ever so slightly, but still in a rising trend. 
did not have an entry. Uh, then yesterday or uh, Tuesday, of course, was in a, a big update. And then yesterday was the biggest decline of this year. And I think they said in the top four declines on the, on the Dow for uh, ever. And so this has just been a wild, wild market this week. And even today, it's been a wild market. It's been up. I think the Dow has been up almost 200 points and now it's negative slightly. So it's just uh, trading on whatever the latest little headline or news or tweet that's coming about and it keeps changing directions. So it's a kind of a hold off on the longer term momentum trades right now to kind of see where this settles in. Now, on the other hand, I also provide a service for covered calls. Now, here at Compound Stock Earnings, we use covered calls differently than the overall market. If you listen to people on TV, they use covered calls in a total different manner. They're using kind of as a, well, I don't have anything else to do. It looks like it's kind of defensive. We'll just go ahead and do this. We use covered calls to generate weekly cash flow income into the account. And again, based on using the proprietary charts of compound stock earnings and at the same time, the techniques that we've developed for covered calls, we sell in the money covered calls with a positive call return, meaning that when it gets called out, which is the goal, that all of your cash is returned, all your investment in addition to income for that week. And so I provide another training session on Wednesday mornings live in the market. And those are recorded then as they're, as they're going. They're live and then they're being recorded at the same time. So you can watch them over later on. You can watch them later on. You can watch them multiple times and really soak in the training. And during the cover call process, which is typically buying a stock and selling a call against it, which means you're selling the right to somebody else to buy the stock back from you. That can generate monthly or weekly income. And in the platinum service, which is kind of an advanced covered call training service, we use synthetic calls. And so you can find out what those are. Last week, the synthetic calls that I entered, let me go to my notes here. Uh, McDonald's was 4.8% return with all the capital with four days. Disney, 10% return at four days. Home Depot, 7.2% for four days. And those are all entered on Monday, closed on Friday. Roku was actually 26% for one week. And Amazon, 10.4% for four days. So those were all entered into the market and then closed out during the day, Thursday and Friday, with all capital return plus the additional income as well. And so this week, so far, I've got Walmart, Apple, and Amazon. And Walmart announced earnings last night, and they're up $5, and that's really deep in the money. Amazon is positive today, and Apple's hanging right in over 201 So. All of those look like they will be closing out this week too for somewhere in the six, seven, eight percent return for, for this week as well. So you can um, see those on the training. And when we get ready to enter a position in our own live account with our own money, these are real live positions. We send out an alert that says, this is what I'm planning on doing. So you can follow right along and you can start with virtual trading so you're not risking any money and you can learn right along the way step by step by step and see how we're doing it in our own account. So um, check out our website, compoundstockearnings.com yeah, for more information. So maybe we'll go to Keith now because it looks like Joe has actually got, hey guys, Joe is gone. So we've got it now. You got the boom. <laughs> yeah. So, Keith, why don't you talk about uh, your service? Because Keith has another platinum service as well. Yeah, thanks, Randy. Um, I do the uh, weekly credit spread uh, service, and um, we look to do either, both uh, credit spread trades as well as uh, been doing the uh, credit spread momentum trade, particularly the short-term one recently. Um, uh, just like Randy, any trading I do is uh, in my own account. And I tell you what I'm going to do before I do that. 
We were able to open a new short-term um, uh, CSM on Monday and closed it 20 minutes later for a 7% gain. Uh, it started uh, jumping down. It was actually a put, so we were trading on the uh, tick falling on Monday for SPY, which is the ETF for um, S&P 500. And I tried to cancel my closing order before it uh, dropped too much, and I didn't. I just missed it, but uh, you could have gotten probably over 30% gain if you'd uh, just let it go for about uh, three or four more minutes. Anyway, but for 20 minutes, I like being in that, particularly given the volatility of the market right now. I think the short-term CSMs are great. Um, I don't want to be in overnight. I just don't want to do that right now. You just never know what's going to happen um, with the, the in the market or any news at the moment. Um, We'll get back and start trading the longer term CSMs, which I'm typically in one to two, three days, but just not right now. So anyway, three percent on Monday, and we're continuing to uh, watch the charts and and uh, go based on our rule based approaches for both entry and exit on these trades. Um, I have a webinar on Tuesdays from noon to about 1:30 East Coast time, where I go over this in detail for trade where the rules for it what am i looking for and we go through the charts and spend a lot of time in the charts looking through that too so um and i'm around for emails if uh, any uh, questions come up on that so so anyway so that's what uh that's what i do on the weekly Christ spread service excellent All right. So can you guys can you guys see the uh, the comment there on screen? Yeah. Uh, yes. That's uh, for Tony and Micah. Um. Uh. So <clears throat> Dave, he's one of our listeners that we have every morning. He's a, a quite active listener. He's always asking questions, informative questions, and stuff like that. He asked uh, just a few seconds ago, Tony and Micah this morning talked about watching E1 through and three and the opening of the Bollingers. Impressed with how you both catch the move early. Can you elaborate on what you see? Um, <clears throat> yeah, so, you know, specifically what we're looking at is, you know, the position of the, um, the moving average or the red line and in relationship to the signal line or the blue line. Uh, we, we try to see, you know, the positions of where each one of those E1, 2, and 3 lines are at with each other and um, how how we're able to catch them so early um, a lot of times is because we are, we are watching an exhaustion phase on E1 um, and then that kind of moves right into the next phase and that either agrees with E2 and E3 because those are longer time periods. So, um, so they may already be in the call or put position, um, but E1, you just got, we're just looking for agreement is what all we're looking for. Agreement and confirmation between all those lines. We're kind of seeing what the tick is doing in relationship to M1 and the Bollinger Bands. You know, is this, you know, is this a exhaustion phase or is it the birth of something? And hey, Joe, go back. And um, so we're looking at all those different factors to um, try and get in as early as possible. And, you know, the more you do this and the better you get at reading the chart and seeing the correlation between the chart and what the option price is doing in your option chain, um, You'll, uh, you'll you you yourself will get in a lot earlier and get uh, get some earlier fills. So, I mean, those are pretty much what we look for. I mean, I don't know, what, Micah, do you have anything else to add to that? Or yes, it's a very um, it's a very cyclical process for sure. Um, but also, E two three, E one two and three have. Sorry, there's a car driving away. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, e one two and three are slower and faster in reference to each other um, for a reason. So what they end up accomplishing um, is the ability to kind of know what's coming, right? Oftentimes, um, I, there was a time this morning, I remember, I don't remember exactly which trade it was, but E1 was um, 
a few seconds past its cross. E2 was just making contact with blue, getting ready to cross, and E3 was just in the direction and flattening out, um, getting ready to reverse. So you know what's coming um, in the overall picture, and you're just trying to find the right moment. But I would, I would focus on learning how they're delayed in reference to each other because that can give you a little glimpse into the future of, of what's likely to happen. Um, now that's not the only thing you consider. Like if E1 is at the top and starting to flatten out, um, if it doesn't have any downward pressure, it's not going to push it all the way through. It's not going to make a nice put for you. Um, but if you also see that there's a lot of downward pressure, the market's increasing red, um, those other factors are going with you, then you can get in earlier and earlier. And oftentimes we probably jump the gun a little bit on E1, 2, and 3, uh, especially E2 and 3. We may, we may jump the gun a little bit because we know, um, we don't know, but we have you know enough confidence that it is going to, to continue in, in whatever direction we see coming. So. Okay, hey, this thing's working now. I can't believe it. Before there it, you are. Board. Yeah, I'm on the computer, and I hear you. When I was on my iPad, you guys were just, I couldn't understand what you were saying. It was all broken up. Likewise. Yeah, and so, you know, okay, good deal. Okay, let's con continue on. Uh, I, oh, hey, Mike, did, I got a text you. Did you do another trade? Yep. Yeah, we just uh, hopped in for a touch of that foot that just happened on Apple, um, mm -hmm. 70 to 74. It actually went to, uh, it broke a dollar. <laughs> what, what, was, what was the return? Um, only, let's see, four cents on 70. So I think it was 5.7. I think it was on the text. Okay, great. Okay, thanks. Okay, yeah, good. and uh, yeah, it broke a dollar like three minutes later. So definitely not all we could have grabbed, but. Um, and the question from Reese, um, you know, it says we have the option paint up. What exactly are we looking for on that? We're not looking for anything, really. We're just looking for. Just signals uh, how fast the option price are moving, um, and you know the fluctuation. And if it's, you know, typically if you if you're seeing price like we dealt we saw on Tuesday when the price is moving five or six cents in an in instant, you know that's a lot of volume. And uh, if it's moving one or two cents every couple of seconds, it's not as much volume. So that's pretty much all we look for. Okay, great. Randy, did you get to talk about about uh, what you you were up to while I was gone? How about Keith? Keith? Oh, oh yeah, Joe. We solved the world problems and everything while you were gone. Well, fantastic! I know it doesn't take long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Randy and I both went through our uh, our services and okay, what we great. did. Um, one thing I'd like to say that I didn't so I didn't hear what what you were talking about, so I, I'm repeating myself. Yeah, you know, I'm sorry. But uh, yesterday, the last couple of days was prime for showing the, the advantage of uh, of uh, the micro moment. Just simply, since we we trade, you know, the movement and not the not the stocks, and uh, just you know, you know, down eight hundred points, up three hundred points, depending on which day you're looking at, and we came out with just great returns both days, and uh, it's just really really consistent. So it's going to be a good week. I know that that uh, Randy does too, and you you know, in your own in your own techniques because the different the thing y'all have that we can't do with micro moment is you can manage you can manage that position, and if it goes the wrong way with all those techniques we've got, when people take the courses, they take your course, Keith, they take uh, Randy's course, they learn all those management techniques. So it's so it's just as safe on on those crazy days. Uh, in fact, you have more opportunities to get in and out when something goes down and uh, sell a call, buy it back cheaper, sell it, buy it back cheaper and stuff like that. So all these techniques. And again, if you subscribe to their services, you're going to get their real trades. These are trades that are doing in the real accounts. And uh, and you just follow those trades and they're going to answer any questions and, and all of that. But uh, so how's the uh, how's the chat doing? Is it working okay on this? I see that, I see it when they, they pop up with a question. So do you have to do something to initiate to get to pop up there? I think uh, Marcus controls that. He just sends it over over the screen when whenever we're ready. But, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, those are all the comments coming through on YouTube. So actually, oh no, we got a we got a couple more. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, helpful. Thank you. 
how many contracts do you buy to make four cents worthwhile? Um, is for Pony and I. Okay. Um, I mean, making four cents worthwhile probably at least you know fifty contracts. Uh, once you're getting good, once you're understanding the concept and reading the chart well, because it's purely a technical trade, um, like just like the other services, very technical trading. And so, to make it worthwhile in micro moment. I'd say fifty or more. Um, and you get, uh, you know, so if you if you um, choose at the dollar strike price like we normally do um, every morning, <laughs> fifty contracts. That's five thousand dollars. Four percent of five thousand dollars is, I believe, two hundred bucks. So, um, you know, that's a that's a good a good point at which to anything less than fifty is. Mm, it's, uh, I'd say it's well worth it if you're more, so I stick around there. And I mean, it depends it on uh, where you're at. You know, I think 20 contracts, that's a that's a profitable trade still if you're not getting absolutely robbed on commissions. Um, but it's still a profitable trade, um, but it just depends on, on what your personal goals are here too. You know, everybody has, everybody invests for a different reason. Um, you're at a different age, space in life. You're trying to make a, a day job out of it, a career like like uh, Tony and I do, or, or you're trying to just to save up for retirement. All the, all the difference are, all the reasons are different. So um, what's, what's fantastic about that retirement aspect, and, and I talk about this all the time, it's in that information I send out. If you just start with, with two thousand dollars just two thousand dollars never put another penny in your account and just take this micro moment take any one of these guys and just pull out six percent a week uh, they all make more than six percent a week one six percent a week uh, well leave the money in there if you put in two thousand bucks for two years 24 months at the end of 24 months if you just got six percent a week you're going to have over eight hundred thousand bucks at that point you can start calculating pulling out six percent which is going to be what Six percent, forty-eight thousand, fifty thousand bucks, just once, just once a month. In your other three weeks, you're still, you know, compounding your six percent. So your money's going to be astronomical. But in just twenty-four months, which is two thousand dollars, absolutely incredible stuff. Uh, uh, Randy, you've got a, you've got a message there from a question from Frank. Hey, Frank says, uh, how do your techniques perform in a bear market or a market correction? Well, for momentum trading, it's uh, whichever direction that the equity is trending. So we've been in a rising trend in the in the market for about 10 years now. So we've been doing calls. But if the market turns around and goes into a negative trend, then those would be looking for the beginning of a declining cycle and buying puts. As far as covered calls go, there's always something going up when something's going down. So even in the big decline yesterday in the market where the, the Dow had the record decline for this year, uh, TLT was still going up, GLD was still going up, um, the, uh, the VXX was going up. So there's always something that's in a rising cycle when others are in declining. There's always something declining when things are rising. So the, uh, the critical part about the cover calls is watching the charts and the trends and selecting at the appropriate time. In addition to that, our, our cover calls are in the money. They're deep in the money. So like, like as an example with the Amazon last week, Amazon was trading around 1800. Well, I had the 1700 call that was my profitable call return. So Amazon could drop a hundred dollars a share during the week and I would still be called out all of my capital return and a 10.4% return for the day or for, for four days, like entered on Monday, exited on Friday. So that that's what allows for kind of normal market corrections. Now, if the Dow dropped 7,000 points all in one day, then it would be into management. And as Joe said, we have management processes. So we're not just relying on it having to go up. Number one, 
it's deep in the money call so it can go down and still have a profitable call return. But if it goes down too much, then I have management techniques that I teach to allow for exit with capital return, all capital return at a lower position even if it continues to go down. So it's kind of counterintuitive to the average person out there, but the techniques do work and um, they've been working through ups and downs. So even though we've been in an overall rising market for 10 years, there's been quite a few months where it's been declining and still profits can be generated. So uh, hopefully that takes care of your question. On those on those uh, management techniques, when, when we're doing the uh, micro moment, we don't have those techniques. Our only recourse is to just get out quick. We really rely on that chart. If it indicates it's heading the wrong way, you know, we get out versus absorbing 25, 30% loss. We could and still end up with good returns, but normally Mike and Tony get out with maybe a one, one and a half percent loss or something like that. We just nothing to that at all. Like the other day on uh, the real, when the market was up so much a couple of days ago, I think we had a couple of uh, small 1.2, 1.5% losses. We still ended up with a huge, huge return for the day. So, yeah, Joe, Joe this is Keith. Uh, the other thing that uh, I guess we haven't specifically talked about, but are the CSD charting tools. And they really, we're not guessing at things. We, um, we follow trends and we put the probability on our side to be able to have a successful, a successful trade. And a lot of times, like I had one trade on Monday this week, which was great, 7% return. But the charts haven't supported things later. So the best trade for me is wait, be patient and wait until the charts uh, reset to be able to enter a trade and, and, and take advantage of that. Uh, me personally, I don't like management things. So I want to make sure that uh, I have a really high probability of success when I get into something that it's going to be um, a viable trade. So the charts are absolutely key for uh, being able to do these trades. Okay, great. You know, I just noticed something. And I take it, I, you know, take, I take advantage of them all the time. Poor Micah, he looks, he looks like a young Groucho Marx. You know, I don't know if you know, you all know who what Groucho Marx looked like. Who's that? With the mustache, mustache and his eyebrows. It was just like a new, you know, Groucho <laughs> Marx. Who's Groucho Marx? <laughs> Groucho Marx was really a famous committee comedian. Oh, and, all right. <laughs> he had a cigar, he was smoking a cigar, and he had he had really dark eye eyeglasses, eyelashes, and beard like that. You know. uh, Randy, if you, Randy, uh, you do what you look like, Randy, Mike, right? Mike is just way, way, way too young. But <laughs> Google Groucho Marx. He used to have a, a weekly. Uh, kind of talk show, uh, comedian kind of talk show, uh, way way back uh, when, and yeah. so um, the, 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 there was uh, multiple multiple Marx brothers as well. So, um, so if you ever waited to see another screen, Marcus, you should pull up a picture of <laughs> Groucho, <A> Groucho Marx. <laughs> Put it right under mine. No, he was really, he was really famous. Yeah. So. Well, good. At least I'm famous. I mean, people laugh at me, but yeah. we're good. <laughs> Um, oh there, God! There, there you there go. He looks just like him, just like him. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one one thing I did want to say though is is um, you know I've I've tried quite a few strategies and different things and and a lot of them are focused around losses if that makes sense um a lot of the even successful traders that i saw would go into a trade setting risk levels before um and things like that and they would be upside down when they entered the position the thing about trading into momentum into trends with the market is you're coming from a position of power already because you're either already in your position or you know you're you're in a place of of deciding how much you want to try to make as opposed to trying to win or lose or win or lose, you're already ahead on most of these positions right when you get in seconds after, and then you can decide from there. We don't, we don't make, you know, one, 2% losses because it's already going negative. The times we take a one or 2% losses because we were up a couple cents, but we didn't take it. 
So then it comes back down and we get out before we're in the negative or very small. So like even, you know, Randy and Keith's techniques too, we're in a position of power when we're making these decisions. And most of the places that traders lose money, we don't even encounter that because we're going with the market and we're in a head. And then when it comes back down, we can decide from there. So. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> nominating the micro moment show for nominations for the 60th sixth day yeah, that's, that was from Derek Derek ah yeah. oh, nice Joe or Dave I agree <laughs> Dave <laughs> yeah Dave says that uh, Joe disagree I think Micah looks more like a young George Clooney well when he's on stage yeah I mean you know. uh, okay here's Russell I've been involved in the TSS on X Brought, bought at 39 bucks current price, 11.03 current price, TSS price, seven bid, 435. Should buy, should I buy back the uh, start writing it back up or just asking? That will hold it, it disappeared. The question, okay, let me read again. It was in a TSS. Current price. This, one, this one's for Randy. Oh, okay, Randy. That must have been one of yours he did. You see it from Russell? Yeah. Well, okay. the, the, the TSS is a management technique for, for covered calls. So if a stock has been rising and you buy the stock and sell the call against it and it decides to turn around and start going down, then the management technique is the TSS, which Joe just made the name up called Tethered Slingshot. But what the technique actually is, is selling an option that expires way out in the future collecting that premium. And then as the stock declines, the premium goes down to buy it back and then you buy it back for a profit. So you might sell the call at 10 and buy it back at seven. You still have the stock. It's going to be going up and down. And then you let the stock cycle back up and then you sell the call again for a high amount. It cycles down. You buy it back for a low uh, and lock in another cash return. And you can do that over and over and over and over again for forever. If, if required until it starts uh, rising back up towards your original price. And so the entry and exit points are all based on the charts. And so I just looked at uh, X, which is U.S. Steel, and it's still declining. So as long as the price is still declining on U.S. Steel, which you have no control over. So it's not like you can say, oh, well, I'm going to make it go up. It's going down. So you can profit with cash income as it goes down by buying that call back. So I think he said he sold it for 1130 or something, and it's probably worth about five. What uh, current price 1103 he bought uh, and sold uh, for 435. So we buy it back on the V. So right now the chart is still going down. It's it's still going down. So we wait till there's a V where it starts coming back up then that's where we buy it back. So it's all based, all of the rules are chart based. So every technique is rule based and we just follow the rules. And so we sell the TSS when it's high, buy it back when it's low. And so um, it would be that as long as it continues to go down, you let the TSS stay in place until you see that V on the chart. It's important to realize on that chart, nothing goes straight up at 90 degrees up or down at 90 degrees. So it's going to come down. You know, when when it stocks going down, the highs are getting lower and the lows are getting lower. And like Randy said, you want to buy it back on that regular V at the bottom of, of the chart, and then sell it again when it goes up and makes an inverted V. Because even when it's going down, it's going to always go back up, make an inverted V, and then continue on down. So you're always producing income on that on that TSS position, whether you're doing it because you didn't get out of it originally, or you're doing it because you want to be in it forever. It's a great technique. And T TSS stands for tether slingshot, which means you're throwing the stock way out there. Like Randy said, you buy a you know, call way out there in the future, and that acts as the stock. And uh, uh, you're going to sell calls against that. And it's out there, so far out there that that nobody's ever going to exercise you and mess the deal up. And if you look at the uh, TSS strike price selector that, that tells you which one to do, uh, for whatever the market circumstances are at the moment, uh, you, you would say, well, look, you know, if I sell this thing right now, somebody, this, this, this strike, somebody can come in there 
and uh, buy me out for a loss. You know, I'm selling a strike. Let's say I paid 50 bucks for the stock and I just sold a $25 strike on TSS. And you say, somebody's going to come in and buy me out. They're not because they got to pay you a premium. And when you take that premium and you add it to the, the strike on that, on that, whatever you sold, it's more than what the market price is, which means if they pay you that, you just go back in there and buy and you've got money to buy the stock back and make a return just on buying it back one or two or three bucks, whatever it is. So uh, nobody's going to do that. So that's why it's, it's we call it tender slingshot. It's so far out there in the future that nobody can mess with you. So, okay. You're welcome, Russell. Now, are these, are these messages here different from the ones you have on YouTube, Micah? No, they're actually the same ones. He's, uh, He's able to select them and display them on the screen. Um, and we're mm -hmm. Facebook Live as well, I believe, Marcus. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, not yet, but we, but we will be have soon. All of the, uh, are we Facebook Live as well? Not yet, but we will be soon. We will be soon. Cool. So, it consolidates all the comments from the different platforms. Um, and you can select which ones to display based on, you know, who's speaking and, and um, everything like that. So, it's a really cool system. This, this platform for, Streaming is way better than Google Hangouts. Yeah. Good. Good. So, are there, are there any more questions there? Anybody? Yeah. We've got yeah. All right. Uh, this is from Dave. Uh, Micah Tony struggling with timing. Presume it will improve with time. Any recall of your early days with this technique if you struggled when you turned the corner and reasons why you turned it? Um, yeah, so, um, struggle with timing. That's a, it's kind of a slightly vague, uh, question, but I understand what you're asking. Um, <clears throat> so the struggle with timing is what we're, what we're looking at is the, um, the relationship between E1, 2, and 3. And, we are just like Micah mentioned earlier, when you can kind of tell when an exhaustion phase is approaching or or you can actually tell when an exhaustion phase is occurring and we can start preparing for um, the put or call. And so we go over we try to go over that in the mornings uh, when we say, you know, all right, we're going to prep this or prep that. But um and just look at the relationship in the range. Look at the range um, of E2 and E3. If there's, you know, if the, you can see the range shrinking or if red is overlapping blue and there is no range, okay, that those are really key indicators that we are approaching or we are currently in an exhaustion phase and approaching the death phase. And usually sometime after that, um, we are then – uh, going to enter a trade on a new birth phase. So you want to you want to you want to be able to understand when you're in a death phase or at the end of an exhaustion phase, and that's when you want to prep your call of strike. You want to leave that open, and then you want to try to enter on the birth phase. And you and you're able to see that by the the the, uh, the amount of range between <clears throat> the lines and. Um, and then, of course, you just wait for the agreement, you know, all of them are crossing or heading up, et cetera, et cetera. So I think once you better understand that relationship, you will get earlier uh, fills and um, and start, uh, start, you know, seeing a little, getting, getting a little better results. So. Yeah, my transition was a little different. I was heaviest into it when we still used... Um, M1, 2, and 3 mainly. Um, so I'd been doing it a long time when that was the main focus, is M1, 2, and 3 going stacked up and stacked down and their crossovers. Um, that is a much slower um, place. And so I was finding myself getting into things really late or getting into things that would begin to cross through and then just reject and bounce back. Um, that was the that was a struggle for me, but I was still in it for a couple of years. Um, so I kind of got a sense for, for the price action and, and everything within that time. Um, and then the turn for me was when I moved from M1, 2, and 3 um, to um, 
M1, 2, and 3 to the E lines. Um, so that was the turning point for me is, is moving my view down to the E lines and already having an understanding of the overall picture um, because I had been looking at, I'd been prioritizing the wrong details, if that makes sense. There was a question right before this gentleman here at Cam Cambria, if I pronounced that right. Uh, somebody that was was trading some of the system and was talking about, uh, yeah, friend, okay, a friend. Uh, what you might do, if you'll send me an email, joseph at compounds.com, I'll send you the link that goes to a YouTube session that we recorded today. It's about an hour session, and it's you can subscribe to that session, and, and you can see exactly what they're doing. They're teaching you how to use our proprietary charting to get in and out of these deals. It doesn't take you very long since you've got some, some trading experience, but I'll send that link to you, and, and you can watch that you know, anytime you want. It's on, it's on YouTube. And it's exactly and precisely the seminar that we just recorded from the, the seminar yesterday that they do, and uh, that could actually answer a lot of your questions. Which you'll see exactly what how they're how they're doing and what they're doing, and, and you'll see our charting. So, uh, yeah. so you want to take that question from Cambria? Um, yeah, I'll read it off. But I'm going to tackle that last question real quick. Yeah, you know, how long did it take to transition into options? Um, that question was asked there, uh, the one that Joe was talking about. Uh, it's the road that it depends on, you know, how fast you understand the concepts. And uh, in my experience, the less knowledge you have about short-term trading, the better, because um, you're not you're not already starting off with a certain bias of a certain strategy. You are able to transition like newly into the um, trading strategy, and that sets you up for much. So uh, just a relative question, just depends on how you like it. Uh, check out the YouTube and then, you know, join us for, uh, join us for some webinars. But um, uh, the other, the next question was, Andrea, did she, you know, have we had any net loss um, in, a, in a day? Uh, thankfully, we have not. Uh, we've only, we've had some days where we don't make any trades at all. But, uh, but what Michael was saying earlier, um, what Michael was saying earlier about the you know going into a position of power in each one of these trades of all these services that we that we provide here um i 100 agree my philosophy for micronormal trading is every trade is a winning trade we just have to we just need to figure out you know how to enter and when to enter and then also we need to have a predetermined profit target that can be easily met each trade and uh and sometimes sometimes that's adjusted but with uh, specifically with micro moment trading, I, I my philosophy and it's still hold it is every trade is a winning trade. We just need to get the timing of entries um, down very consistently, and then we need to have predetermined targets set before each uh, transaction. And if you're if you're able to get to both of those, you'll have a very very high success rate of um, of your trades. Okay, let me answer this a friend again. That email address again is Joseph CompoundStockEarnings.com. Joseph CompoundStockEarnings.com. And on the question regarding losses, and, and, and Tony's exactly right, we've not had a day of losses. Now, sometimes we will not have a day of anything because we don't even do a trade. Like last Monday, it was just not proper for us to do a trade. I mean, that, these guys know what they're doing, and, you know, we're going to take a risk of doing trade. So we had one day with no trade, but we still ended up a uh, tremendous return for the week. As far as individual little losses go, on uh, Monday of this week, we had a total of 19.07% return net. We had one, two, two losses, each one of them a little over 1%. On Tuesday, we had a return of 140.45%, and we had one loss at 2% out of uh, 10 trades, with seven trades on Monday. Uh, we didn't have any losses on Wednesday, and we didn't have any losses today. We ended up at 34.05, counting uh, counting Michael's last Apple trade. So uh, I remember our biggest loss was by me, like two or three weeks ago. It was like six and a half percent or something. Um, it was in like the first four minutes of the market and hopped into something that turned immediately, sold it immediately. But it was just was that you that did that? Was that you? I think that I think that was me. That was 
<laughs> yeah, it was a Friday, so it was like everything. You was were probably strange. going through one of those spells that you guys twenty one years old go through, whatever that that yeah. is when you get to talk to them. Yeah. Now I tell you what, it, it was an exciting day. Uh, was it uh, uh, Tuesday? Tuesday, yeah. Look, then we we they had they had ten trades, one hundred forty point four five percent. They had Mica had a trade of forty point eight zero percent. Uh, Tony had one at twenty one three and one at twenty seven three. Mica and one at seventeen, and Mica had one at uh, another some other big ones. Uh, I think he had eighteen percent of today. No, thirteen point nine percent today. Yeah, but yeah. You, when you when you participate in their service, Michael Mom service, you're getting these trades. They prep them. They tell you when they're going in, when they're getting out, and uh, they're doing those trades. So as is Randy and as is Keith. So, uh, and you know, it just depends on the speed. Like, like you got to move fast on this micro moment stuff. And Randy's it has fast moving trades and slow moving trades in the conventional cover call area. And uh, uh, Keith is uh, his his mostly a little longer term because the credit spreads. So he doesn't have the, you know, having to move real fast type stuff. So. Anyhow, so does anybody else has a question? Have a question. Uh, I want to add one thing real quick back to Dave's question about you paying attention to exhaustion and death phases. What's a good indicator for that is watching the M line. Uh, M lines are a good indicator for current movements because they're moving averages off of the uh, current price. And so, you know, if you're watching the relationship between M1 and the green and the blue, once you see M1 starting to cross over the green and blue, that's you're, you're approaching. <clears throat> a lot of times, you're approaching that exhaustion and death phase, and you're about to start a new phase. So you kind of just combine that with the positions you see on the E lines, and uh, that should help you out there. It just takes some time. It takes some time to understand. It's really fast, but the learning curve can take a while. Yeah, and a friend, that is, that is the correct email address. That is the correct email address. So. Okay. Do you have some more questions there, Mike? Can you see? Yeah, I mean, I think there's uh, going to they're, they're continue to be questions. So just depend. We're, it's, we're about ten till eleven. How 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 long do you want to go, Joe? Yeah. Well, last time we went we went to a few minutes before. I, I don't want to go over an hour because these guys got other things to do. So we'll we'll stay another five minutes, something like that. Any questions? Okay, this is a real fact checker. That's uh, my friend down in Puerto Rico. This is for Tony. Go ahead, Tony. All right, uh, for Tony, this morning you had a call start, and in seconds you had uh, on a foot. We'll call that decision. Each two, each three, we're still in the call position. Where you just working on the tick? Yeah, this is the, the trade that Michael was referencing about the position of E one two and three, where E one crossed really fast going downward. E two um, crossed. Or it wasn't I actually didn't cross. It was just meeting the uh, the signal line or the blue line. So right, it was just being blue, and then E three wasn't even in a in a put position um, yet because uh, it was just it's a longer uh, longer time length for E three. But um, yeah, so the reason why I did that is because if you were watching your option chain. It was it was moving up three or four or five seconds in like an instantaneous way. Okay, so whenever you see that sort of movement in the option chain, you know that that's a very high influx of volume, and those are the moments you want to get in and get in pretty quick and get filled pretty quick. So uh, you just you know in those cases you use your hot key or just instant fill or whatever it is, and try to get in um, as fast as you can and just let it ride out. That's that was one of the bigger tricks this morning. But uh, but yeah, that's um, that's the trade Michael was talking about earlier, where it wasn't all in a it was going into that first position, but uh, it was so much volume that the lines were moving, the E one two and three lines were moving very quickly, getting into that first position. So I wanted to enter it, you know, um, pretty early. So that's the reason for that trade. Okay, I might also point out that. Uh that these guys have all been with us. This, this isn't brand new for any of them. Even, even our youngest member there, Mike, has been doing this uh, four years, right, Micah? About four years, starting when you're 17. Uh, 
uh, Randy, yeah. good Lord, I don't have Randy, 12 years, 13 years, Keith, or nine or 10 years. Uh, Tony, I'm not really, Tony, how long have you been with us on this? Um, probably a little under two years. There you go. The youngest guy. There you go. Or the youngest time, yeah. So, uh, okay, well, is there any more last minute questions there? Uh, you want to uh, do you consider the relative angle of the tick to M1 when entering a position? Um, a little bit. The more important relative angle is the angle of the Bollinger Bands. We talk about that a lot, um, about you know how they pinch and open up. Um, and one of the ways we get in so early, back to Dave's question, is when it starts to open up, say we're in a in a pinch and the tick starts going a direction um if it breaks past the bollinger you can still see those bollinger lines you're not focused on it because you're looking at the tick but look at those bollinger lines if they're still parallel um you're not going to get much out of that move but when they start to actually angle apart um and their angle changes that's how you know there's actually volume starting to come in so the relative angle of the bollinger bands and then the relative angle of um, the E lines in reference to each other. So red could be above blue. What does that mean? Does that mean they're they're parallel and touching, or does that mean they're spreading apart and getting wider? Does that mean they're you know is it, when it's crossing, are they just kind of parallel and it's starting to fade below, or is it actually coming from a top angle and crossing downward? Um, so the relative angle of of everything definitely goes into it. M1 um, would be included in that, uh, not as heavily as, as the other things, but that's a great question. Okay. Uh, we will be back here next Thursday, uh, 10 o'clock Central Time. And uh, if you, if we are a member of the uh, micro moment stuff, they do two sessions, one in the morning, right when the market opens, usually lasts about an hour. That uh, thing on the YouTube is about an hour and six minutes. And it was yesterday, and they did a uh, number of trades, had a good return. Uh, and then if they break and, and there's reason for them to come back later on, uh, you, get a, you get a text message that says they're coming back. The system stays on, stay into the market close. And uh, so, uh, anybody have any last comments before we turn it off here? Well, just to, just to show that even old guys can still do trade the moment. What while Tony and Michael were talking, I just made six point eight percent on SPX. On trade the moment. Um, trade trade the moment. I, I I was in for three minutes and eighteen seconds. I wonder why so. you were panting. I wonder why you were panting. <laughs> so so you don't have to be you know like twenty something in order to do. Uh, Trade the moment or micro moment trading. You, you, you can be any age. It's just a matter of watching. That's that you, you'll see that Keith and I are always we're looking this way, that way, up it because right. I was looking at my uh, intraday streaming charts right up there on my other um, monitor and saw an entry point and uh, actually bought a put because it was uh, going down. You and, know, I'm anxious, uh, I'm anxious for to have another uh, seminar, whatever we have, because Keith always wears his uh, his recall. The skirt, what do you call it? Yes, kilt. Kilt. Yeah. He wears kilt and, and uh, Micah Singh. I'm not sure what talent Tony has, but, uh, you know. Uh, th th then we can we can get Marcus to, you know, bring his band in. That's right. Marcus has a band. Marcus is going to be our entertainment. Yeah. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> there you go. Where you hey, Joe, hey, Joe I, I just wanted to, I was going to put up on the screen here. I just wanted to point out the latest headline that says UPS has been quietly delivering cargo using self-driving trucks. No. Oh. <laughs> oh. I wondered what happened to my deliveries. <laughs> <laughs> They're out there somewhere in a, in a truck. Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't seen them yet. I bet they've got somebody in it. A live person in it. Probably. Yeah. For now. Yeah. I, I, I don't think they've got re regulatory but uh, somebody, authority yet to do it without a person out of the truck somebody's got to get out of the truck and take it to the next 
you know? Well, well Fed, FedEx had a little robot that, that goes up and down the street, and then it, it opens up its its uh, belly there, and then the package comes out. So they're uh, they're testing all kinds of stuff. Well, they don't they don't have any touch with reality here. Like 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 uh, Amazon was going to deliver by those little the little things. You Drone, know. yeah. Drone. But kids are going to shoot those down. They forget there's BB guns. Kids are going to shoot those down, and people are going to steal that little robot on that uh, gets out of that truck with a package. You know, they'll steal it. Steal it. They could. They're not very big. Robots are small. Yeah, they can they'll, fight they'll back. Probably be spray painting them. Yeah. I'm just going to run around and push them over. I'm not going to steal it. <laughs> See if they can get back up. <laughs> okay, guys. All right. Again, appreciate everybody being here, and we'll see y'all next uh, next weekend. And everybody, go over to that YouTube and check out those uh, our our long session, which was yesterday, that Mike and uh, Tony ran. Thanks a lot. We'll see everybody. Take care. Have, have a good weekend. Bye. Bye.